My name is Melissa. I'm 26 years old and preparing for my homecoming birth. If there's a grandchild, that kind of daughter-in-law can be discarded. While packing, I overheard my mother-in-law bad-mouthing me to my husband. She's inconsiderate, not cute, doesn't bring in money, has no redeeming features. You don't need someone like that anymore. She's so annoying. That's what I wanted to say back to her, but I'm heavily pregnant. Considering my notoriously harsh mother-in-law, if I lashed out, I'd probably get an even worse response. Ignoring the negativity for the sake of prenatal care, I decided it's best to quickly switch gears and enjoy my time. I convinced myself of this and diligently got back to packing. Mama will do her best. So come out healthy, okay? I was excited to meet my adorable baby soon. During my homecoming period, I energetically took walks and spoke to my belly every day. During this homecoming period, I could spend my time in a very relaxed mood. My mother-in-law, who comes without notice, overstays her welcome, criticizes the food, complains about the nursery I've prepared for the baby, just keeps complaining about anything and everything. Eventually, the long-awaited baby was born safely and raising her in my cheerful childhood home, even though it was busy, was a lot of fun. Well, I'll be back next weekend. I reported this to my husband over the phone, but I honestly wanted to stay at home a bit longer. But I can't be spoiled forever, and I'm worried about our own home. Since my husband is not interested in housework, I wondered if the house might be a mess. This is going to be your home, Lisa. We need to get back and make it a comfortable environment. As she filled her belly and slept peacefully in my arms, I smiled back at my child. I'm back, Brian. I had a lot of luggage and I pressed the doorbell, hoping someone would open it for me, but there was no response. I had no choice but to struggle to unlock the door and enter the house, but there was no sign of anyone. I had told him I would be back at this time. As I headed to the living room with that thought, I was frozen in shock by the sight that greeted me. What? What is this? The room was so cluttered there was no place to step. It's not just a mess because no one has cleaned. At a glance, it seemed intentionally made messy, like things had been flung around randomly. Could it be a burglary? Scared, I rushed out of the house. Hello, is this the police? I just came back from my homecoming birth, and my house is a mess. While I was trembling and making the call, my well-slept child began to fuss, and I was in a panic. A familiar neighbor who was passing by became concerned for us and let us rest in their house for the time being. The neighbor was able to calm my shaking with fear and surprise, and after my daughter drank some milk, she fell asleep again. Before long, I heard the sirens of the police cars, and I returned to my house, accompanied by my neighbor. The front door was locked. I got scared seeing the living room and haven't checked the other rooms. When I explained, the police praised me for my good judgment. I learned that when a burglary occurs, it's dangerous to encounter the intruder. It's safer to go outside and wait for the police rather than checking on your own. I had been in such a rush that I didn't even consider the possibility of running into the burglar, but upon imagining it, I was filled with fear. What? What's this? Why the police? The sure voice echoed when I had just finished explaining the situation. Oh, it's a terrible situation. Mother-in-law, our house is in a complete mess. We suspect a burglary, and the police are here to investigate. Before I could finish my sentence, I felt a harsh slap across my cheek, which made my vision sway amidst the commotion of the neighbors and police. I instinctively held my stinging cheek while my mother-in-law, her face flaming red, shouted loudly, You shameless woman, how dare you do this? A burglary, you say, and to call the police? What were you thinking, huh? I was stunned, unable to comprehend the fury of my mother-in-law, coupled with the throbbing pain in my cheek. A neighbor stepped in to mediate, telling her that calling the police is not something to be ashamed of, and that investigating is the police's job. But she wouldn't listen. Really, you're so irresponsible. 
You might be home for childbirth or whatever, but you left my dear Brian alone and went back to your parents' house. You're nothing more than useless if you're not home doing housework, and what's more, the moment you return, you create a police commotion. You're indeed an outstanding wife. Despite everyone around explaining that it wasn't my fault, she wouldn't listen. I was trying to get my head around it when a thought struck me. Even though we may have been burgled, you're not concerned about any losses. And besides, it's the first time you're seeing your grandchild, yet you don't seem interested. Why? Everyone around me nodded in agreement with my words. That's because it's not time for that. How dare you blame me without even apologizing? My mother-in-law ignored my question completely, insisting on her point. Mom, what's going on? Brian, my husband, cut into the argument, seemingly relaxed. Brian, you see, listen to this. It's terrible. The appearance of her beloved son put a gleeful expression on my mother-in-law's face. Melissa seems to have called the police. Huh? Why? She's been saying there's been a burglary. There's no way that could be true, Brian. Please tell her not to behave so absurdly. Is, is that so? Hey, Melissa, maybe you misunderstood about the burglary. It's causing a nuisance to the neighbors. You know, the police are also busy, so let's send them home soon. What? I was staggered, but for a different reason this time. Not only my hostile mother-in-law, but also my husband, Brian. I couldn't believe he'd say such a thing. Wait, Brian, our house is a mess. The police are still investigating. We don't know if it was a burglary yet, but the state of the house is weird. We're about to check if anything is missing and file a report. No way, that's out of the question. Brian cut me off with a loud voice. But why? The conversation was not making any sense. I was at a loss and tears started to well up in my eyes. I came back here, and there was no one, and the room was a mess. I didn't know what happened, and I was scared. I couldn't hold back my sobs. A neighbor was comforting me, and their warmth made me cry even more. Yet both my mother-in-law and husband in front of me seemed annoyed and simply stared at me. Why? Why won't you understand? My heartache seemed to have reached my daughter, who was asleep, as she started crying too. This only irritated my mother-in-law and husband even more. With the kindness of the neighbors and the concerned look of the police, I ended up staying over at a neighbor's house that night. Stolen things. I don't know. Melissa's just making a fuss. Let's go inside. Yeah, Melissa, cool your head off. My mother-in-law and husband seemed not to care about the mess and quickly went inside after the police finished their investigation. I didn't think he was that kind of person. Standing in front of the closed door, I remembered my husband's words. My mom still thinks I'm a kid, and it's super annoying. I generally go along with her just to avoid conflict, but it's really a bother, even though he used to say such things. However, I couldn't just stand there forever. After apologizing over and over, I ended up spending the night at my neighbor's house. Mom has to be strong. I'll do my best, I said to my daughter, who was finally falling asleep despite being fussy. The next day, when I headed home, my mother-in-law and husband were there. Mother-in-law, did you actually sleep here even with everything in such a state? The living room was somewhat cleared for them to sit, but it looked no different from the day before. I had checked the other rooms with the police, and it seemed as if stuff had been dumped out of the storage in all of them. The sight was the same everywhere. Despite constantly complaining about my cleaning, my mother-in-law had actually stayed in the house in that state. She hadn't started cleaning or anything. She just sat there looking grumpy. What do you mean, did you actually? I felt sorry for Brian, who was left by his wife, so I couldn't go home. Her words got to me, and I retorted, It's not that I left. It's that you didn't listen to what I was saying. What? What a way to talk. My mother-in-law's face quickly turned into one of anger. Brian cut in from the side. Also, stop making a fuss about a burglary. 
has your head cooled off? He said it in a way that was annoying, and I felt something snap inside of me. That's right, it's not like we were burgled, right? I was surprised at how low my voice sounded, but Brian didn't respond to my angry tone. He just smirked a bit. Yeah, finally understood. That's right, you were overreacting about the burglary. Anyway, start cleaning. Brian said it as if it was someone else's problem, and my mother-in-law also raised her chin in a triumphant way. Housework and childcare are a wife's job, aren't they? My mother-in-law said this in a sickeningly sweet voice, as if talking to a pet. What? I'm not cleaning up. It's your mess, so you should clean it up. I shrugged at the two of them looking down on me. Excuse me? As expected, they didn't seem to like my response. You're such a nasty wife. Get moving already, my mother-in-law snapped at me, huffing and puffing. What a pain, my husband grimaced. In front of them, I handed them the divorce papers I had received and filled out first thing in the morning. I want a divorce. Huh? My husband blinked, looking taken aback. That's right, I want a divorce right now. At that, my mother-in-law snatched the divorce papers and dramatically moaned, Oh, poor Brian, how terrible to be treated like this. As she cradled my husband's head, I retorted, Just a big baby, are too. I had tried to hold my tongue, but my true feelings slipped out. What did you say, Melissa? You. The two of them were so angry they seemed to be on the verge of bursting. Of course, they weren't going to take my word sitting down, but I wasn't going to back down either. Did you not hear me, or can you not understand? Big Baby Brian Divorce. Here are the papers. Please sign them right away. I knew it was petty. I knew I shouldn't sink to their level, but at that point, I didn't care. Enough with the jokes. Bow down, apologize. They threw me to the ground, pressing me to the floor. Apologize now. Brian's strength made it hard to breathe, and my eyes filled with tears. Then, Melissa, get your hands off my daughter. My saviors were my parents, who had come running to my aid. Behind them, I saw the friendly officer from the previous day, coughing and gasping for air. I was relieved, and my strength left me. What are you doing barging in here like this? Get out now. My mother-in-law and husband were being restrained by the officer, writhing and struggling. It's no use, you've been caught in the act of assault. With help from my father, I stood up and said with a smile to the two struggling people, Actually, I only asked the officer to come and check on the situation from yesterday. I never imagined you'd assault me. What? What the hell is going on? My husband growled, but I wasn't scared anymore. We have a baby monitor camera installed in this house for our little Lisa. It's a live stream camera. It couldn't record the person who trashed the room, but, as I said that, both of them visibly relaxed. Huh. So what? It's a live camera, I told them. Right now, the kind neighbor who helped us yesterday is watching over this room. They listened to your conversation yesterday, along with a lot of people at the police station. My parents were watching too. Yes, after my mother-in-law and husband disappeared behind the door yesterday, I started checking the baby monitor camera. The police suspected that this whole break-in thing seemed fishy, perhaps even staged. Not just my mother-in-law, but my husband too might be involved, they said. Unfortunately, they hit the nail on the head. Before I got home, you two messed up the room on purpose, then came back pretending to be surprised, trying to blame me. You were planning to get an apology payment from my parents by saying they couldn't stand a daughter-in-law who would do something so unbelievable. You guys didn't need a daughter-in-law because the baby wasn't a boy. You wanted to kick out an unnecessary daughter-in-law and get a new one, right? What on earth is an affair approved by the mother-in-law? I finished saying everything in one breath, and everyone else in the room was staring at them with cold eyes. It must be some kind of mistake. Huh? No way. I wouldn't cheat. Huh? Um, Melissa, 
Do you still have more to say, this nonsense? Stop. My mother-in-law, who for a moment forgot her position and started to get angry, was not forgiven by those around her. I also refused to be told if I'm needed or not for such an unreasonable reason. I don't need a family that doesn't ask at all about how the baby is doing since I arrived today. It's not normal for a neighbor who's looking after her to be more loving to my daughter. I'm going back to my parents' house. Of course, I'll divorce, and I won't give up custody. As a result, it worked out just as they wanted. No, wait a minute. Police station. I don't want to go. Let go. I don't want to. Both of them made a fuss as they were taken away by the police. After that, my mother-in-law and husband became infamous in the neighborhood. Of course, it's a bad reputation. They tried to improve it by giving me a divorce settlement, but no good rumors spread. Well, of course, no matter how loudly they say we paid it, no one would believe it. I went back to my parents' house, and I'm raising my daughter with them. I found a job there through an acquaintance's introduction. Honestly, I'm not without worries, and it's hard, but when I look at my daughter's face, I feel like I can do my best. I'll work hard to raise Lisa straight so she doesn't resemble her father.